Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship this morning. In case you're wondering that those things you see outside, that's called rain drops. It's been a while, hasn't it? But the last few days have gotten some nice rain, so we're supposed to be getting over an inch of rain, so that'll be nice for the... I seem a little high, hot. Thank you. Okay, great. Again, it's, it's a uh, pleasure to have you with us this morning. I welcome those who are online with us as we gather together to worship and to praise God and to be, be together in community. We continue our uh, series from a distance, is your God too small? Today we're talking uh, from Psalm 139 that you are marvelously made. So that's going to be our theme today. And what does that mean for us and for all of creation when we understand that and live that out? At this time, I invite the worship team forward as we begin with our opening song. Welcome to worship. We're trying out some new songs this week. And Lawson's going to start us out this morning. On the drums, you are wonderfully made. Upon a time, life was so innocent Somewhere along the line, your smile came and went They made you feel like you just don't measure up They try to steal your light, but you are a treasure of The maker of the stars, the stars You don't have to wonder, you are wonderfully made Perfectly beautiful in every way Wonderfully, wonderfully made You're anything but typical, it's true They ain't seen anybody quite like you God never makes a mistake You are wonderfully, wonderfully made See, once upon a time, there was a secret place Where heaven's hand designed even those freckles on your face Some things you'd rather trade, some things you try to fix Love has one thing to say, it's perfect just the way it is Just the way You don't have to wonder, you are wonderfully made Perfectly beautiful in every way Wonderfully, wonderfully made You're anything but typical, it's true They ain't seen anybody quite like you God never makes a mistake you are wonderfully, wonderfully made. So the world could see the works of God on display. So let your doubts and your fears and your questions fade away. Just let them fade away. Once upon a time, life was so innocent I think it's time that smile found its way back home again One, two, three. You don't have to wonder, you are wonderfully made Perfectly beautiful in every way Wonderfully, wonderfully made you're anything but typical, it's true They ain't seen anybody quite like you And God 
God never makes a mistake. You are wonderfully, wonderfully made. Wonderfully made. Once again, welcome to worship, whether online or here in person. And I want you to know that you are indeed wonderfully made. And you are welcome just the way you are today. Because the way you are is the way that God has created you. It's the way that God is interacting in your life. So we receive all that God brings to us today. And let's do that by gathering with our opening prayer. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we are just thankful that you know everything about us. And that there is nowhere in all creation that we can go that you are not there. Help us, O oh God, to believe and to trust that we are made in your image, that we are wonderfully made. And in so doing, we can see in each other your presence. That we can accept ourselves the way that we are so that we can live lives fully. That we can use all the gifts, all the talents that you have given us to serve you and to serve one another. Bless us this day as we gather. Bless those who cannot be with us. Bless those online. Bless those who gather across this vast creation. May we all feel your presence and know your love this day. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. All the earth proclaims God's glory. All the universe and beyond proclaims the vastness of God's creation. All creation praise you, O God. Our voices and our hearts here this day proclaims your greatness. At this time, I invite Casey to share a children's message this morning. Casey. Good morning, everybody. It's time for another children's message. And what I'm so excited about today is that we are actually going to hear from my very favorite psalm, Psalm 139, and it's a psalm that has meant a lot to me in my life. And one of those reasons is because, yes, it reminds me that we are wonderfully made and how carefully God created each of us just to be exactly who we are, but it also reminds us of just how much God loves us and to what extent that love really goes. And one thing that it made me think of was a beloved children's book that some of you may have heard before. Maybe some of you have it at home already. And I thought I would read it to you because I think it does a good job of describing this extensive, huge love that God has for us in a way that maybe we can understand better than sometimes reading a psalm might do. So if you have it at home, maybe you want to get it and read along with me. We are going to listen to The Runaway Bunny. Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away. So he said to his mother, I am running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you, for you are my little bunny. If you run after me, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream and I will swim away from you. And if you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman and I will fish for you. If you become a fisherman, said the little bunny, I will become a rock on the mountain high above you. If you become a rock on the high mountain high above me, said his mother, I will be a mountain climber and I will climb to where you are. If you become a mountain climber, said the little bunny, I will become a crocus in a hidden garden. If you become a crocus in a hidden garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener and I will find you. If you are a gardener and find me, said the little bunny, I will be a bird and fly away from you. If you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be a tree that you come home to.
If you become a tree, said the little bunny, I will become a little sailboat, and I will sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind and blow you where I want you to go. If you become the wind and blow me, said the little bunny, I will join a circus and fly away on a flying trapeze. If you go flying on a flying trapeze, said his mother, I will be the tightrope walker and I will walk across the air to you. If you become a tightrope walker and walk across the air, said the little bunny, I will become a little boy and run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, said the mother bunny, I will become your mother and catch you in my arms and hug you. Shucks, said the bunny. I might as well stay where I am and be your little bunny. And so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. I love this book so much and you may also like it just as much as me because yes, it makes me think of God like that mother bunny rabbit following after us, caring for us, taking care of us. But it also reminds me that the love of God and that good news can be found in many places and sometimes they can complement each other. You can find a children's book or another book or a movie or just something else that happens in life and you will see it reminding us of the truth that we find in the Bible, in the Psalms. And so look around today and pay attention. How is the good news of God's love being shown to you in maybe a unique way? Check it out. Think about it. And how are you knowing the expansiveness the bigness of God's love for you in a deeper way today because of that. Let me know what it ends up being, okay? I'll see you next week. Thank you, Casey, for that reminder. Today we are looking at Psalm 139. And again, as Casey mentioned, this is a very powerful psalm to remind us about the very depths of God's love and how God will not let us go. Hear these words from the psalmist. You have looked deep into my heart, Lord, and you know all about me. You know when I'm resting and when I'm working, and from heaven you discover my thoughts. You notice everything I do and everywhere I go. Before I even speak a word, you know what I will say. And with your powerful arm, you will protect me from every side. I can't understand all this. Such wonderful knowledge is far above me. Where can I go to escape from your spirit or from your sight? If I were to climb to the highest heavens, you would be there. If I were to dig down to the world of the dead, you also would be there. Suppose I had wings like the dawning day and flew across the ocean. Even then, your powerful arm would guide and protect me. Or suppose I would say, I'll hide in the dark until night comes to cover me over. But you see in the dark, because daylight and dark are all the same to you. You are the one who puts me together inside my mother's body, and I will praise you because of the wonderful ways you created me. Everything you do is marvelous. Of this I have no doubt. Nothing about me is hidden from you, I was secretly woven together out of human sight. But with your own eyes, you saw my body being formed. Even before I was born, you had written in your book everything about me. Your thoughts are far beyond my understanding, much more than I could even imagine. I try to count your thoughts, but they outnumber the grains of sand on the beach. And when I awake, I will find you nearby the Word of God. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So for these past several weeks in October, we have been doing this sermon series, God from a distance is your God too small. The first week we talked about the vastness of creation. If you were here, you heard me talk about how 
it is estimated that this universe in which we live is 100 billion light years in diameter. And science would tell us there may be more than one universe. But scripture talks about how God is beyond that universe that we know. And just the vastness and complexity of this universe in which we live in. The next week we talked about an atom. How God is found in the smallest element of all creation. We talked about how, in fact, we share atoms with one another. And it is estimated that each and every one of us has at least one atom of every person who has ever walked on this earth. We are deeply and completely connected to one another. Our DNA shares 99.9% similarity. Last week, last week we talked about God and time. Where is God in time? And how scripture talks about God being beyond time and yet present in time. And I shared how science is beginning to discover how that is mathematically possible for a spirit to be beyond our three-dimensional world in which we live. And we began to ponder what that means if God can be both present now and is beyond existence. And this week, this week we turn our attention to creation itself. Marvelously made. I love this psalm because this psalm really is this sermon series, isn't it? <laughs> the psalmist says, I can't understand you, God. You're beyond my imagination. Wherever I go, if I go to the highest heavens or the lowest depths of the earth, you are there. Even the darkest, deepest cave, you see me. You see me, and you know me. You know every thought before I even speak it. Think about that. Think about the fact that God knows what you're going to think or say before you even do it and still loves you. <laughs> right? Isn't that amazing? Yes. Because <laughs> usually we think, well, if I think that, God's not going to love me anymore. Guess what? He already knew you were to think about it. In fact, God knew you were to think about not thinking about it. And still loves you. Still knows you. And what's even more amazing is not only does God know you and know where you are at all times, God made you marvelous. Marvelous. It says in this psalm, you make everything marvelous, and I have no doubt. But we do, don't we? <laughs> We doubt God makes everything marvelous. Aren't there days when you're wondering if you're marvelously made? <laughs> that maybe God messed up? Maybe it was a Friday afternoon? We wonder, don't we? We wonder about parts of creation. Well, how could God create that? This morning I had a fly that kept landing on me throughout the sermon. But you know that fly is marvelously made. It really, think about this fly. This fly that can see all these different views at the same time. That's marvelous. I don't understand it. I don't particularly like it. But it's amazing. It flies. It sticks. It's marvelous. Because it was created by God. It was created by God. And in the end of Genesis 1, when God is looking over creation, all too often we say, you know, God created male and female, and, it was, and God said it was very good. We miss the part that God says everything is very good. All too often we think it's just humans that are very good. That's not what it says. God looks at all the creation and says, wow, this is marvelous. This is so great. I am so excited to be a part and to watch this marvelous creation unfold. 
that each of us are marvelously and wonderfully made in the very image of God. Now, the question is, well, what about sin? Well, that happens after, doesn't it? But first, you're wonderfully made. <laughs> Isn't it interesting how we tend to go right to sin before we acknowledge that, first of all, we're wonderfully made? See, sin is result because we don't believe it. <laughs> I want to know who's better. I want to know which is bad. I want to know good and evil. I want to choose. And God says, that is not for you to know because you're all wonderfully and marvelously made. There is no comparison. Because our goodness is not by, based upon what we do or do not do. Our goodness is based upon the fact that God made you marvelous. You are wonderfully made by the Creator. <laughs> That's why you're wonderful. You're wonderful before you even act. <laughs> before you take your first breath. Stop for that. Let's pray for that fire truck real quick. Gracious God, we just pray for that fire truck. We pray that wherever they're going, they get there safely. We pray for those that they are helping, that it, they may find healing and hope, but protect them and all those involved. Amen. That you are wonderfully and marvelously made. And think about how oftentimes we look at ourselves in the mirror and we wonder about that. Our hair begins to turn different shades or begins to travel somewhere else on our body. <laughs> our body shape's not quite what it used to be. And we wonder, we wonder, am I really that marvelous anymore? I compare myself to other people I see and feel far inferior, not nearly as well designed as some I see on TV or even my neighbors across the street. We doubt that, don't we? And so oftentimes when I begin to doubt my own wonderfully made existence, I begin to compare myself to others. And either I feel myself unworthy or I try to make myself feel more worthy by putting you down. Think about some of the words we use to talk about the other. Are these words of wonderfully made? Are these words that we would share to something that we think is created in the very image of God that when God was done said, this is so good? Or do we use words that describe them as less than? Less than us so that somehow we're more. You see, sisters and brothers, when God says, you're wonderfully made, he's also saying the other is wonderfully made in God's image. That their goodness is no more found in God than our goodness is found in God. And that the calling of people of faith is to see in the other the goodness and wonder of God. And when we begin to treat each other that way, lives are changed. I want you to think about your own life. Who in your life has helped you see yourself more than what you thought you were at that moment? Maybe it was a teacher, a parent, a grandparent, a neighbor. But my guess, all of us have had individuals in our lives when we were feeling less than, someone came along and believed in us. Believed in who we could be. And they gave us the courage to believe again and to move forward. As someone reminded me at the, at the first service, to say that you're wonderfully made and everyone else is wonderfully made doesn't mean that you should be less than you are. If you're good at something, be good at it. <laughs> but if you're not good at it, don't worry about it. You're good at something else. But don't base your goodness upon somebody else. Base your goodness upon the fact that you have been wonderfully made by your creator of the universe. That's who made you. And that's what you're called to live out, to be. You're not called to be anyone else. 
Because God knitted you together in your mother's womb when you were being created. Think about that. Think about how we, our bodies, are knitted together. Think about all the different things that go into our bodies to make us what we are. Think about all the breaths that you've taken while you've been sitting here and you didn't even know it. Think about the fact that you can see without saying, I should see now, or hear, or speak. Think about your heart beating without any conscious effort because you were so knitted together, your body functions when we're asleep and when we're awake. Isn't that amazing? And that God was present in that knitting together? And that God is present in all of life when it's brought together, whether it's that fly or ourselves. God, it, activity is present, knitting it together to be what it's called to be. And it is very good. You are marvelously made. You are wonderful. Wonderful because life is a wonder. You are wonderful because God created you and you are the very image of God. It says in the New Testament, you are royal priesthood. You are God's body, God's hands and feet in the world. You are my beloved. You are my child. You are co-heirs with Christ. That sounds like people who are wonderfully and marvelously made in the image of God. And our invitation is to invite others to believe and to trust that. To trust that they too are wonderfully and marvelously made and they too can live that out without trying to be less than or more than someone else. They are created to be what they were created to be. And that is enough. Next week, we're going to look at God's purpose for your life. Because you have been wonderfully and marvelously made, God has a purpose for you. You have been created just the way you are to fulfill what God is doing in the world, which is the redemption of the world and all of creation. And each of us has a part in it. Each of us has been designed to bring that about through God's activity in our lives. What voice are you going to listen to? Are you going to listen to the voice that tells you you need to do more or you need to be different, that you're not quite good enough? Are you going to listen to the voices that tells you you have to be something that you're not in order to be of worth? Because that is how the world speaks, doesn't it? The world always speaks about, if you're not a winner, then you're nothing. If you're not this, then you're nothing. God says, God says you are wonderfully and marvelously made. God says you are my very image in all of creation. God says I have a plan for you, and I know everything about you, and I love you completely. Which voice are you going to listen to? Which vo voice is going to transform the world? The voice that says, you're just not quite good enough? Or the voice that says, you and all of creation are marvelously made. Now be that which I created you to be. Be that which I have called you into existence to live out. You are marvelously and wonderfully made in God's image to live and to be who God created you to be. May we trust that voice and may we share that promise with one another and the world. Amen. Let us pray.
Oh, then gracious God. So often we forget that we are marvelously made. So often we beat ourselves up or we try to put others down to feel better about ourselves. But you remind us today in Psalm 139, we don't need to do that. We can simply trust your promise that you know everything about us and, and is about us and that you made us wonderful. You made us wonderful because we are created in your image. We are created to be in connection with you and one another. Help us to trust that and to live that promise so that others too may know that they too are wonderfully and marvelously made. In Jesus' name, amen. story of my life You go before you fall behind Yeah Before a breath beyond my death You are with me on the way to everlasting
in response to all that God has and is doing in our lives, I invite you to join with me in our affirmation of faith. Let us confess together. We believe in one God who is creator, maker of all we see and all we don't see, who is ruler of the universe, source of all creation. We believe in one God who is Jesus the Christ, God from God, light from light, to, to God. <laughs> it's a test, but it's all wonderfully made, so thank God. Uh, he, is our, he is the one with the creator, the word made flesh, our Messiah, Savior of all creation. We believe in one God who is Holy Spirit. Breath of God moving among us, who is one with the Creator, one with the Christ, our comforter and our guide, mentor of all creation. Amen. For some reason, our computer this morning is tired, so it must be the rain, uh, but, so we apologize, but thanks, Neil, for keeping up with us. At this time of the service, we get an opportunity to speak to this one who was there at our birth, who was there at our beginning, the one who is there in our final breath, the one who brings us life. We get to speak to this God today. We get to be in God's presence. We get to raise our voices up so that God may know our hearts and God may hear our voice. I invite you to think about those places, those situations that you would like to lift up before God. Place him into God's care, trusting in God's promises. At the end of each petition, I will say, God of all creation, I invite you to respond. Restore us. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, wherever we run, wherever we climb, wherever we go, you are there. You know what we are about to say. You know what is in our hearts. You know our very being. You have been with us throughout this life in which we live. Help us, O oh God, to trust your presence, that you do, in fact, know us. And by knowing us, you love us. Let us not be afraid, but let us be confident confident in all the gifts that you have given us. May we use those blessings to serve you and all of creation. May we also value one another. Not only are we marvelously made, but all of creation is wonderfully made. All of life is precious in your sight. All of life reflects your glory. Help us, O oh God, when we lessen parts of life, when we look at the other as something less than, something for us to control or even to abuse, help us to see that in them is your presence. How we care for the other is how we care for you. And in so doing, may all of our lives be transformed by this amazing promise that no longer do we need to try to be good enough. We can simply live the goodness that's reflected in you, that we can let go of our pains, we can let go of our mistakes, and move into the newness of life in you. God of all creation, restore us. Holy God, we pray for this world in which we live, a world that continues to be devastated by brokenness. We are reminded constantly of violence, of war, of famine, of struggle. We lift up to you today, O oh God, those 17 missionaries in Haiti that are being held captive. We pray for the country of Afghanistan as it continues to spiral into chaos. And we especially pray for those who are the most vulnerable, those who are being caught between the different powers and the different desires. We pray for those that are being affected by this huge storm that's coming into the West Coast, especially in those in Northern California that have already been devastated by fires, now are facing the possibility of flooding. We pray for those who go to bed each night hungry, 
those who are afraid to sleep because of what may happen. We pray for parents that look at their child and long to keep them safe. And we pray, O oh God, that your peace and your presence would be known in all parts of this creation. That somehow leaders and communities would begin to work together to realize that we are all connected. That we are deeply dependent upon one another. And that we would give up our desire to be better and instead seek that all may be cared for. God of all creation, restore us. We gather here today, O oh God, in the midst of the rain to hear hope, to know your promises. We come here today, O oh God, with our own, own burdens, our own desires, those times when we feel less than, those times that we have reached out and hurt others. We come here today as broken people, but yet somehow claimed as very good. Help us as we live in that tension, as we know the very darkness of our hearts, but we also know that you are there in the darkness, shining your light and bringing your healing. We lift up to you, O oh God, those places in our lives that need your healing touch, that need your deep felt presence. We pray this day for Sandy as she continues her journey towards your kingdom. We pray for Paul and Terry as they grieve Taryn's death. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer. We pray for Kathy and pray for all those who are struggling this day with diagnosis or possibilities. Be with them and bring them hope. We continue to pray for our hospitals that are overwhelmed and for nurses and doctors and all those who care for the most vulnerable. We pray for our teachers and students and parents. And we pray, oh God, that uh, we would just continue to be this community of hope that you have called us to be. And we pray for those things we now name aloud or silent in our hearts at this time. We trust, O oh God, your ways, even though they are far beyond our understanding. We trust your promises because you know the very depths of who we are. And you call, call us and claim us as your own, loved and forgiven and redeemed. Help us to live into that promise. And let us share that promise with one another, especially those who are feeling discouraged, overwhelmed, those who feel isolated and alone. Those who feel unworthy, may we remind them that they were marvelously made by you. And just allow us to be the people of hope that you have called us to be. Using all our gifts, all our talents, all our lives in service to you and to one another. God of all creation, restore us. Bless us on this journey of faith, O oh God. Give us your peace. Allow us to make a difference in each other's lives. And may we reflect your glory and your love to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, again, I just want to thank the whole community for its continued generosity. Again, because you give, we can help and care for those in need. You can see up on the screen that if you'd like to give electronically, you can go to hopeeagle.org and click on the Hope Gives icon. The um, iPad is working out in the, in the narthex if you'd like to give that way or you can send your support either through the mail or drop it off here at the church again because you give we can care for those in need our food bank continues to grow um, this month as more and more people are coming because the situations are changing costs are going up and there are more and more families who are struggling trying to make ends meet but because of your generosity we can give them the food and the hope that they need so thank you Please join me now in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Amen. It's two in the morning and I'm still awake in my bed And I can't shake these lies that keep reading around in my head What if I saw me the way that you see me What if I believed it was true what if I traded this shame and self-hatred For a chance at believing you That you knit me together in my mother's womb And you say that I've never been hidden from you And you say that I'm wonderfully wonderfully made you search me and know me you know when I sit when I rise so you must know the choices I've made and the pain I hide what if I saw me the way that you see me what if I believed it was true what if I traded the shame and self-hatred for a chance at believing you cuz you knit me together in my mother's womb and you say that I've never been hidden from you and you say that I'm wonderfully wonderfully made and your eyes they have seen me before I was born and you know all the good things that you made me for and I'm wonderfully wonderfully
before I share our benediction, just a couple things coming up. I uh, just want to thank everyone with the Crop Walk. Joe and Glenn helped uh, organize last week. We raised over $1,000, so thank you for all the support. Yeah, good job. It was a nice day to go walking. I also invite you to go to the uh, Young Disciples page. We had a pumpkin party carving yesterday, and that was a fun time. Uh, families got together, carved some pumpkins. Uh, kids got to show off some costumes. So thanks for uh, Casey and the, and the Young Disciples team for organizing that. So I invite you to check that out on our website. Also just want to um, let you know that next Sunday is Reformation Sunday, so we're going to be confirming some of our confirmands that during that service. We're also going to just be celebrating Reformation Sunday, so I invite you to wear red if you have it. The next Sunday we'll do All Saints, so on November 7th we'll celebrate All Saints Sunday. I invite you to think about those saints in your life, those who have gone before us and those who continue to walk among us and who have been saints in your life, and we will lift them up during the service. For the month of November, uh, before Advent, we're going to be focusing on gratitude. What does it mean to live lives of gratitude, uh, not only in our own lives, but across the world? So that will be our theme for um, the month of November. Next week, we're going to be talking about God's purpose for you in your life. So I invite you to those um, opportunities to learn more and to share what God is doing. Hear now the words of our benediction. God, our creator, you have made us one with this earth to tend it and to bring forth fruit. May we so respect and cherish all that has life from you, that we may share in the labor of all creation to give birth to your hidden glory through Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing song. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting out fear. And even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this life, I won't turn back, I know you are near. And I will fear no a life that is coming for the heart that holds on a glorious light beyond all compare and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes we'll live to know you here on the earth and I will fear no evil for my God is with a light that is coming for the heart that holds on and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes still I will praise you still I will praise you
God never lets go because you are marvelously made in God's image. And God knows the very depths of our hearts. So, because of that reality and that truth, we are sent. We are called by Jesus to go and do likewise. We love, we experience, and we discover God. And God's will in the world. And all of God's people said, thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, Hope.